Um, hi, I am Tande. Uh, I have been playing Final Fantasy XIV since ARR, um, off and on. I've been an Omnicrafter since around then, too. Uh, and I, I kind of uh, missed some of Heaven's Ward, but I started really playing during Storm's Blood. Stormblood and uh, became really obsessive with crafting. We'll admit that. Uh, a little obsessive. Uh, <laughs> I really like it. Anyways, uh, welcome to my panel about how to not be bad at crafting. Uh, hopefully, I'll have some information for you that is uh, new um, or helpful. We'll see. Uh, anyways, uh, this is based off of this is based off of Endwalker uh, 2020. Two, um, since some things have changed uh, from X, uh, X pack to X pack, give or take. Um, but yeah, um, I did hold a similar panel last year. Uh, I was a cat boy then, but now I am an NPC because uh, everyone loves grandpa. But anyways, um, but why would you want to be a good crafter or even a crafter to begin with? Um, well, you see, there's currency involved you can get money for items it's pretty great um you also there's also glams hidden behind a bunch of uh quests as well as uh just levels um usually every x pack has a, a different clam for each class including your uh lovely crafters and gatherers it's pretty great um also uh at least last x pack we had the um Ishgard Restoration, and uh, yes, I was a saint every single time because I'm that obsessive. Uh, and um, still working on getting my uh, pterodactyl, but I'll get it sooner or later when I have the time. Anyways, uh, beyond that, I mean, it's also just fun. I uh, find a lot of entertainment in just sitting there and filling out my logs and making money and stuff. Yeah. Anyways, so... Uh, Let's start with uh, talking about what class the classes even are. So there's blacksmith, armorer, culinarian, carpenter, leather worker, alchemist, and weaver. Um, these all uh, have stats that are um, craftsmanship, control, and CP, which I think is like control points or whatever, um, or crafting points, one of the two. Uh, and uh, just like any other class, uh, these stats will do different things. So craftsmanship is just basically advancing the completion of your craft. Um, the higher it is, the quicker um, your uh, completion skills will uh, go. Um, control uh, advances quality. Um, the higher the control, the easier it is to get a uh, high quality 100% or even higher. Oh, well, not higher, but, you know, close. It's really great for doing expert crafting and all that stuff. And then there's CP, which is just a general resource, just like MP um, or TP. Uh, we don't have that anymore, but we did at one point. Um, anyways, uh, I always suggest people, um, and how I do my alts too, is I level them all together. So I'll usually do them by um, the towns. So, you know, you have your Limza and your Olda and your... Uh, in Cardania, so especially uh, uh, blacksmith and armor are like right next to each other, so they're super easy to do. Um, on top of that, uh, you're gonna have less wasted inventory space because as you go through the levels, they use about the same um, sort of uh, uh, mats and stuff. Sorry. Um, on top of that, uh, you'll get um, free mats as well as free gear from your quests as you go. Um, and then you can either get rid of them or desynth them as you don't need them anymore. Uh, if you're like me, I don't have that much armory space. I'll admit that. Um, I have a lot of glammies uh, on hand. <laughs> so I have to be particularly careful about that. Um, it gets even worse when you uh, have like everything unlocked and you have all your weapons. Uh, I think like if you have a weapon for every class, you have like maybe 10 open spots for like random weapons just for glams or just whatever. Um, just a heads up. It, that's just, it just makes it easier to do that together. Um, and then uh, also crafting your own gear uh, is really great. So if you're leveling everything together, you can do, you know, weaver and get your top and bottoms made super easy high quality and that'll last you like a good 10 20 <laughs> levels surprisingly uh high quality is pretty great anyways so yeah that's basically the basics um i will say i also recommend people leveling gatherer classes at the same time 
um, just for free mats, as well as, um, I mean, it's also something to do on your off time sort of thing. It's a, something else to do instead of getting obsessively crafting like I can do sometimes. Anyways, um, so when you go to craft, it'll open up your, your, your crafting log. Um, and uh, depending on your levels, you'll have different levels unlocked. Um, and for example, here is a uh, item I could make, treat it through slumber. Um, and I guess here's just the layout of like what is what. Uh, difficulty is just overall difficulty of the craft. Um, I don't really pay attention to that very much until it's like super high. Uh, it's just kind of like a random number to me. What matters more is um, if there's characteristics down here. If you have a craftsmanship that's required or a control requ required, um, those are stats you need to actually even start doing it, um, which is important. Um, on top of that, like durability is also another number you need to worry about. Uh, that's pretty much um, a resource where uh, every time you use a skill that, uh, or I guess not every skill, but most skills will take some durability when you're doing a touch or a synthesize. Um, so, uh, and when that hits zero, the craft breaks and you're out of the mats and that's sad and I cry. Um, <laughs> quality, um, you can uh, use high quality ingredients, um, which is getting like less and less applicable uh, if you're doing like lumber or whatever, things that you gather, you can no longer gather high quality stuff. So um, it's just based on like crafted stuff. Um, and yeah, you can only get max 50%. Um, and that is actually nice <laughs> when you like are doing uh, end game crafting stuff um, to have that like base uh, percentage of um, your quality there. Um, on the bottom there uh, of your crafting item, um, it'll have, you know, your options or synthesize your quick synth which is only available with um, items available under a certain difficulty based on your current gear. Um, it can kind of get kind of annoying because like level 90 stuff, um, you're the ones that like are say items that are more applicable to the current patch, you can't quick synth. So like every single lumber I need for a weapon that I'm throwing on the market board, I gotta sit here and craft. Um, Thankfully, that's what I use macros for, but uh, yeah, it's hell. Um, and then this little button is great. Uh, it's your trial synth, um, where you can just uh, try out uh, making it without using any items. And I mean, it won't produce an item, but say you're doing expert crafts and you want to figure it out, or you want to figure out if your macro even works, um, or even if it's possible that you can get something um, high quality without any high quality ingredients. You got your trial synth. It is m amazing. I'm so happy they added that in there instead of having to fiddle around with um, like Garland data uh, macro maker things to make sure that like I'm actually capable of doing something. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so when you actually go to craft, it'll pop up in a crafting window. Um, a lot of it's sort of self-explanatory, but um, I guess we should probably go over it anyways. Uh, step doesn't really matter too much. Um, it's just basically it'll progress your buffs um so like veneration here and inno innovation would go down one if i was go go forward a step um durability like i said that's just how long you have until it, it just busts and you're out your material progress is um how far along you are on finishing the craft um uh and quality is how what's the likelihood you're going to produce a high quality item um when it's maxed out it's 100 percent um <laughs> it's got i will say fall fantasy 14's uh high quality percentage thing is very very um it's it's sometimes uh, a jerk and sometimes not a jerk it sometimes like i'll have like high quality at 15 percent and i'll be like oh, this isn't going to be high quality and then it makes it high quality Sometimes I'll have it at 95% and still get a normal quality item, and then I cry. Um, anyways, uh, and then you have your condition. Um, condition is really great, um, and one of the biggest aspects to why I don't use macros for larger items or more expensive items um, 
because uh, there's okay. So there's four conditions. There's normal, good, excellent, and poor. If you're using a macro, um, you won't be able to really uh, be certain that you're gonna get what you need when you're hitting like your final uh, like uh, quality scale. So you could be on poor, and that would basically ruin your entire macro. Um, good is basically, I, I don't want to say it doubles, I think it's like 1.5% uh, of your quality, if you're advancing quality, as well as there's some uh, skills that will proc off of condition too, by the way. Um, excellent is like, I think double, give or take. Sorry, I'm going to move myself. Um, there we go. Uh, no. Uh, and uh, poor is basically, I want to say it's like half. Uh, it's, it's very sad when you accidentally hit uh, Brygarts at, when you have poor. Um, there's more conditions in uh, Expertcraft, um, which I, I'm i willing to go over at the end of this panel, but it, I don't think this panel is going to be covering too much about it. I'm more than happy to talk to people about it. Um, I have done expert craft, uh, crafting like for Ishgard as well as um, the... Uh, relic, quote quote tools that just look like Kentucky Fried Chicken items. Um, <laughs> totally worth it. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, um, so the crafting window will also have a little arrow here. Um, if you hit it, it'll show you your current um, buffs, which is very nice. Uh, I usually just kind of look at the top of my screen. I can see them fine, but just to have them in all in one place and know exactly the number because I know they can be kind of small easier to read when they're right here. And finally, you have your calculations, which is um, also really great. It'll basically tell you uh, what skill you're using um, will give you what. Uh, say you need more quality, hit quality, and you can see what you need to do. And or what if you did X or Y, it would give you A or B, you know, uh, number wise. It's very nice. Um, that's a more recent addition that uh, has basically made my life a lot easier. Um, so, uh, I'm assuming uh, not all of you are uh, zero level crafters, but um, I do a lot of alt levelings, and uh, I know some of you probably are. So we can go over leveling um, for early level. Uh, I usually start off with um, doing quests and crafting log. You'd be amazed how far the quest and crafting log can get you. The crafting log will give you bonus experience every time you craft something for the first time and if you make it high quality or you have more steps or put more effort into it I, I don't know it's kind of weird you'll also get more XP which is very nice very nice um, quests will also uh, be fairly easy from 1 to 30 um, with incredibly easy turn-ins um, you can either buy them off the board or make them they're honestly not hard to make um, you'll get free gear. And another good bonus about doing the quests and doing your crafting log at the same time um, is each uh, guild will have an NPC with items for early on, uh, or mats will have early on mats for items that you make in your crafting log. So you can just sit there and I can literally get like zero to 30 in like 20 minutes because I'm just doing crafting log stuff and quests. It's very nice. Um, levs are also an option. Uh, you just have to unlock them on whatever you're at, um, and then turn in stuff. High quality will give you double. Um, and, uh, you can generally find someone, uh, somewhere to sell you some items if you don't want to take the time to make them. I know there's people who will buy and sell lev kits. Um, it's just time to put in to do that. It's, I'm not against it. Um, it's very nice when you don't have the time to do it yourself. And finally, you have supply missions, which you unlock at your grand company, and they will give you GC credits, which is amazing when you're making alts and you're trying to get enough GC credits to unlock um, apartments or something. Uh, and boom, uh, pretty much free GC credits for that. You don't have to do any fate grinding or any of that stuff. Um, again, it's double XP if you're turning in high quality items, which is very nice. Um, yeah. And uh, those are done daily, by the way. Um, and they're usually turn-ins based off of your current level um, at the reset. So um, I definitely would do them before you start doing all this other stuff. Uh, uh, and, like Do it like at the start of your day playing kind of stuff. 
Um, later leveling, you'll be able to unlock collectibles. Um, that's a level 50 requirement. I think you unlock it in Mordona. Um, you basically just uh, throw on collector's hand or whatever it's called, and you um, make a collector item and turn it in um, to Rowena's whatever it's called. She will take uh, take it and give you scripts, um, and you can use the scripts to buy gear, and that's fantastic. Um, custom deliveries, uh, they are all unlocked at random points. Um, I think uh, the earliest you'll get is a Zloe, um, and I think that's like level 58 or 56, one of the two. It's kind of like a weird number, if I remember right. It might be 60. And then um, usually there's one or two each X-Pack. Um, right now we just got the mom, uh, and she... I did not dress her up. I swear I didn't. Um, but yeah, she gives you a really good glam. So <laughs> so you have a weekly mi limit of 12 allowances for that, um, and that's shared between uh, gatherers and crafters, just a heads up. Um, uh, you also have your Ishgard Restoration, which unlocks at level 60, um, it's, and story requirements. And your crafter class has to be level 20 for turn-ins. Um, I mean, that's also a super valid way of leveling, especially since you get um, your sky builder points that you can turn in for stuff you can sell on the market board, and that's like free money. Um, it's very nice, especially when you're uh, gathering from um the Ishgard restoration too at the same time uh you level pretty fast there to be honest um for both fishing and you know your other classes so but again you also have your class quests and i swear there is a skill that you get like at level 68 that makes it worth it and it's like manipulation and manipulation is something i use for almost everything so i definitely would suggest doing your class quest you get free gear um especially uh after your level 60 you don't have to use any mats they give you the mats uh except for um i think for the i can't remember what it's called in uh, uh shadowbringers the um circle where they, they have like the different grouped class quests quote quote um those you have to provide your own mats but uh the class the it's whatever. And you get free scripts. So, um, yeah. Um, so gear. Um, <laughs> don't, let me just start with, uh, don't worry about materia until your max level. Um, don't worry about, let me say that again. Don't worry about materia until your max level. Uh, especially since, uh, as soon as you hit like 50, 52 each, um, like, step every 10 levels is immense it's this if you just switch out gear you don't really need to worry about stats it's very nice um uh most gear is shared between all crafters except for um specific uh script gear that is usually um yeah it's just mostly script stuff and uh like i have my character right now wearing one that's for uh gemsmithing i think um it's very I like the popped collar. He's very handsome. Um, <laughs> anyways, so big points to upgrade. I usually um, will upgrade at everyone at level 30. I say level 30 because um, that's when you can unlock desynthing, and then you get free mats from old gear that you no longer need. Um, definitely unlock desynthing, especially uh, if you just want free mats. And you also get free uh, crystals, which, by the way, I didn't mention either. If you do your class quests, you get free qu crystals too at, um, I think like 50, 60 and whatever. Um, it's very nice. Anyways, um, once you are max level, you can worry about materia. Um, I would definitely, unless you're going to be crafting like the current patch stuff. And even now with Endwalker, the crafts are, I think they're so easy. You don't need to have, uh, pentameld, um, like, I went above and beyond with this. I don't know why. It's obsession. Anyways, um, so your uh, priorities with Materia is you're going to want CP until max. Um, a lot of them will only be, like, one. So just plan accordingly. And then you want control. And then you want craftsmanship. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I spent a lot of money on all this Materia. And I don't know why. Um, well, I do know why. It's because I'm obsessive. 
Anyways, so Master Recipes. Uh, you get these unlocked through scripts for the most part. Um, the latest ones, I think it's just nine uh, cost purple script. Um, and many older ones aren't entirely worth it unless you're into like lambs and housing items or a completionist. Um, book three, you will need for Heaven's Word quest lines. Um, just a heads up. Uh, it's like a hundred scripts, not even. It's super easy. Um, book two is bullshit. I will say that much. <laughs> um, it, it, you have to like make high quality items and it's just like so random. It's, you have to go out of your way to do it. Of these items that aren't even worth it. Um, I don't even think there's anything entirely worth it in the, the recipe books for book two, but yeah, it's bullshit. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So, um, skills. Uh, there are a lot of skills, and this is probably why people get really um, uh, overwhelmed with crafting. It's probably the skills. They they all are very intimidating, but um, really if you just kind of split them down to... They all kind of like split down to their own thing. Uh, like you have your, your synth skills, which are craftsmanship related. You got your touch skills, which are... Um, control related and then you have a bunch of buffs and all that other stuff it's just like any other class um some of the buffs are kind of similar as in like they help with durability or any other resource there's a buff that gives you free cp if you just hit it when you're on a good status and that's very nice um uh you no longer have to really worry about reflect or inner quiet because that's automatically um applied when you start crafting now um stands up that's yeah um so yes but yeah this looks a little intimidating um i i want to say that uh what um separates the good crafters and the bad crafters are um knowing which are important um which are which are uh, not so important um that's how you uh be not bad at crafting uh, <laughs> so you have your starters. Here's a couple skills that will give you, um, things that you can only, uh, use, uh, at either your first turn or very early on in your craft. Um, that would be reflect muscle memory and trained eye. I think that's it. I could be wrong. I might be missing one. Um, reflect will give you, um, two stacks of inner quiet. Or maybe it's three. I think they changed it with Endwalker since you get uh, Inner Quiet at the beginning anyways. Um, so it's not that... It, I, it used to be my starter for almost everything. Um, oh, it's three. Thank you. It's three. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it could be worth it. It could also not be worth it. Um, I used to use it as a starter for everything. Uh, uh, we had many talks with... Uh, some static friends about do you start with reflect or muscle memory muscle memory gives you free um progress um at the beginning it's a big chunk i will admit that and i think i believe it gives you a uh buff for your next uh progress related uh skill um so if you're doing something that is very chunky um in regards to how long it would take you to um craft progress wise um that's worth it. Trained eye is a very interesting thing. Um, it basically, any item that is 10 levels below your current level, you hit that button and you get high quality 100%. So when like, I have like friends who are like, man, I really need new gear. I'm level 60 or something. I'm like, oh yeah, here, let me make it for you. And they're like, don't do that. It takes you time. And it's like, no, it takes me a single button press to make it high quality for you, honey. Like, take it. <laughs> like, seriously. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it'll it do you good. I'll say that much. I really like trained eye. Um, yeah. Uh, and then you have your ending combos, um, which are usually just innovation, great strides, and then uh, your blessing here. It's it's the best. Um, so uh, let me translate this. Innovation will uh, give you a bonus to your um, touch skills, uh, or I guess skills related to quality. Great Strides does the same thing. Your next touch skill will do, um, I want to say double. So you add these together and it's like 
times three, give or take. I don't remember. I'm bad at math. I don't look at numbers. I just, I just make sure it will work, and then it works. Um, <laughs> and then you do Brigard's Blessing, which will use all your inner quiet um, stacks to uh, basically do a big uh, touch action. Um, so that's basically your your uh, big uh ending combo and then i usually end it with like a single like uh progress skill like um i think i just have basic synth that's why i have ba basic synth on my bar if you're wondering anyways so like i said um there are uh skills that are separated into synthing and focusing synthing will um progress your uh well progress and focusing is your quality related items um, some of these um, will combo off each other. I want to say it's basic touch, standard touch, and precise. One of these. There's there's a three combo, technically, for crafters. It's kind of crazy. Um, one I use a lot, uh, just because I'm lazy, is rapid synth and hasty touch. Um, these will get you pretty far. They cost you no CP. If you're using um, certain buffs, they won't cost you any... Uh, durability or they'll only cost you half durability if you're using the proper buffs um but yeah uh i'm trying to remember why i said train finesse is so great i don't remember why but another one i use a lot is um delicate synth because it will progress both progress and quality um so you can just for what is it like 32 cp yeah um and then also one another one that I always keep on my bar is precise touch because that will proc when you are um, uh, your condition is good or excellent and will uh, it's just a good it's good for its cost. Um, um, and then you have your utility skills. These would be innovation, ven uh, veneration, tricks of the trade, observe final appraisal, and then um, we're going to go over specialists later, so try to ignore those right now. Um, innovation and veneration um, are kind of the same, uh, uh, different sides of the same coin. They will buff either your next touch action, or, or I guess the next four um, touch actions, or the next four uh, synth actions. They're nice to have at the beginning, or I guess near the end when you have more inner quiet stacks, and therefore you're uh, gonna have higher quality just from your touch actions. Uh, Tricks of the Trade gives you free CP when you're on good or excellent. Um, it'll give you 20 CP. Um, it has saved me multiple times. Um, that's definitely something to keep on your bar. Observe. You basically wait a turn. Um, this will change your um, status. So it'll, it will say you're on like a poor and you want to be on a normal you just hit that and you're you're fine um it's also good for baiting out uh certain uh statuses for I, the best example would be expert crafting but say you need good to get, make sure you're getting high quality 100 percent. boom just observe but there's also a specialist version of this that costs no cp and does not advance your um uh, your, well, I can't think of the term, the step count, I guess. Um, so it doesn't advance your buffs. Um, and it, but it uses a uh, crafter's delineation, which is an item you get from scripts. So I usually have like a good chunk of them on hand. Um, they're super cheap. They're like five scripts a pop. Um, you can use this three times, I think, and then observe, you can use many times if you want. Uh, careful observation was basically um, what got me through Ishgard Restoration. <laughs> I'll say that much. I would just swap to uh, my specialist because you can swap your specialist um, a couple times a week. But yeah. Um, and then final appraisal uh, is something they recently added in. It basically um, stops your item from hitting max progress. So um, say you have something you want to make sure is going to be high quality. Um, but your synth actions are going to basically finish your craft. Um, you hit final appraisal, it'll stop your craft at one progress before finishing, and then you can work on your um, quality to get 100% or higher. Um, 
it's it's nice. Um, and then the other specialist skill I put up here was heart and skip and soul. Um, it basically there's a bunch of skills that proc only when um, you're uh, good or excellent uh, for status. Uh, these will allow um, for them. Uh, I have not used it very much, but I feel like after looking at it, I'm like, why haven't I used it? It might be one of those like secret things for next X pack or not next, next, next patch to make sure I get high quality reading gear. So yeah. Um, I just realized we finished the thing. Um, uh, let me, I will, uh, explain specialist stuff real quick. Um, in regards to specialist, you unlock that in Ishgard, um, and you get three and they're basically like, they give you a soul stone, um, and you get extra CP, um, and then you get those two skills, uh, and then just make sure to have crafter's delineation on hand and boom, you're good. So yeah, um, uh, so uh, if there were any questions you guys had for me, I'm more than happy to take them either in um, the, let's go with in game first and then I'll look at, uh, um, sorry, and then I'll look at, uh, <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, final appraisal does not uh, advance your step counts or buffs, which is also very nice. Um, they are, uh, it's separate. The specialists are unlocked separate from Ishgard Restoration and level 60 quests. They were actually, um, something introduced, I think, in Heaven's Ward. Um, and they had a little bit different rules where you could only make certain items if you were a specialist. Um, which, uh, was kind of annoying at first, but I think it was kind of nice because it brought the crafting community together. Um... Uh, oh yeah, step count doesn't matter. Don't worry about step count. It's this uh, needless number, I guess. It's just something to know um, if you're going to be advancing your uh, buff uh, counters. Um, a good place to start with level... Uh, what is a good place to start with level 90 gear? Should I get a full purple script sets or have someone make gear or try to make gear myself? Um, so I made my level 90 gear... Uh, when I first, uh, during the first patch of Endwalker, um, I made it with my level 80 gear from last x Tech. If that says anything about how easy it is, um, there's, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Actually, I can probably check right now. I think it's the faucet stuff. Uh, is that what it's called? Let me look. It might actually be in the books. Anyways, um, th I think the the weapons are 89, but you can get 90 ones now. Um, yeah, so I would definitely start with, you could probably get someone to make it for you. Usually when I'm asking other crafters to make something for me, I provide the mats, um, every single mat they'll need, plus uh, the um, crystals. Don't forget the crystals. You'd be amazed at... <laughs> how nice it is to provide crystals to crafters. Um, so yeah, I ho hopefully that helps. Um, what is my favorite food to craft? I like, um, well, that's hard. I'm going to admit, I'm really bad at uh, culinarian. I don't like culinarian because it takes so many random mats. Um, but uh, because I'm, I'm Emma, I'm going to have to say it's the, the soup. The garlian soup with wine in it. That's just, it's supposed to be in character. That's why. <laughs> and then, uh, what crafters make the most money? Um, I'm going to say glam related ones. I'm sorry. <coughs> so, glam related ones would be weaver, leather worker. Um, those are usually a good uh, uh, assumption. That's at what the new um, glam related items are going to be made with. Um, People like glams, especially on roleplay servers, um, if you're on one. Uh, other than that, I will say um, I have seen prices as a uh, uh, goldsmith for that kind of stuff. Um, especially like rings, since people need two rings, hint, hint. Um, 
and plus on top of that the mats are fairly um simple uh so that might be a good place to start um especially with low level uh uh goldsmith stuff <coughs> um do you think crafters have to be pentamelded when the next crafting sets come out i always assume so um but the last x pack and endwalker have um made it too i don't want to say too easy because it's more welcoming to newcomers i want to say it's um yeah it is easier i guess but uh you don't need to be pentamelted anymore i think that was more important in um uh stormblood it was like something you had to do to get like the recent rating stuff done um but nowadays i don't think you need to uh it's expensive and um you can usually get your quality to 100 percent without it so long as you are um you have like level 10 materia in your gear that's usually how it goes um i will say some um crafting macros require you to have certain stats uh just keep an eye out for that when you're looking at macros if you are a macro person uh yeah uh, what's the most difficult thing you had to craft? How long did it take for you to craft said item? Um, in Stormblood, making airships was hell. It was it was hell. You had to have a like a group of four people um, in the workshop. Um, they all had to be like crafting classes, and you and it ha it takes a lot of material. They've simplified it so much. It's so nice. You don't have to have a group of four people anymore. Um, and you just throw materia materials at it and it makes you an airship. It's very nice. Uh, but, um, yeah, I would say that was probably hard. That or any of the Stormblood raiding gear, um, when it first came out. I don't think there's anything off the top of my head recently that was super hard besides the, um, expert crafting stuff for Ishgard Restoration. Um, as well as the, um, the title that I have is from getting all the um crafter weapons from that too <laughs> the um the ones that look like kfc weapons uh <laughs> uh that was de that definitely took a lot of time it, and it was every item like every one out of two items would just be broken or not worth turning in i will say that much um but now it nowadays it's easier since you're 10 levels higher um what is your favorite, least favorite crafter to level? Culinarian. Culinarian. Culinarian is the worst. Culinarian is the worst. Uh, sorry. So is, so is Alchemist. Um, I want to say it's because they use a lot of items that you get from monster hunting, as well as leather workers uh, also, but not as obtuse as Culinarian. Culinarian... Um, especially for like the level 45 and 50 item turn-ins for your quest line there's you ha there's so much stuff you have to gather um and then you just make it it's it's yeah um uh, my favorite uh is um probably weaver or uh carpenter but i'm biased because i really like the guild leader of the carpenter <laughs> His name is Beatus. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Um, when you're crafting something, do you usually gather the mats from scratch, or do you buy the lumber or ingots or cloth from the market board? So this is a it's, this is a good uh, question. I have um, a lot of friends who will help me gather stuff. I will um, recently these days. I have taken to just buying it from the market board. I will say, um, if you do the beast tribes for. Um, ARR and Heaven's Ward, uh, if you do them all the way through, it will unlock the ability to buy like steel ingots and some other stuff, which is worthwhile doing. Um, they have also made it so you can buy a lot of items um, from certain NPCs. Uh, easiest way to tell is your item will have a shop selling price listed. Just make sure to look at that and then compare it to the market board value. Another thing I'll uh, do is kind of price ga uh, gauge based on how much items it'll take to make 
versus like how expensive it is just to buy it off the market board just be smart about it like don't buy like dark steel ore um that takes like three dark or, yeah it takes three to make a dark steel nugget um don't buy it when it's like 600 uh gill a pop when dark steel nuggets are 500 a pop like it just makes more sense to buy the nuggets you know um How do you manage inventory space with all the mats? Um, I have five, uh, <laughs> five retainers. Retainers are nice. Um, uh, leveling wise, like I said, the easiest way to do this is make sure to level things all at the same time. Um, so you kind of have the same uh, gauge of items available to you. Um, I definitely recommend that. And uh, is Alchemist. A worthwhile crafter to level yes um it not only so the thing with like uh alchemist and culinarian is they make um expendable items that crafter or uh, raid people and crafters will be buying constantly um i know a lot of raiders who don't even have any crafters leveled so they just buy it off the market board so you got your tinctures and your food and they're always going to be coming back um so that's a big bonus. The problem is, I since I'm not in the market of it very often, I also would be cautious of it because that's where most bots go. <laughs> so if there's if they're gonna tank, like that's also where it feels like a lot of vindictive crafters go to is like, oh, you're gonna post fifty kill cheaper than me. Well, I'm gonna crash the entire market. Um, I feel that might just be me stereotyping it, but um, yeah, I think it's worthwhile, but only at the max level. Um, and how important is manipulation to end game, end game crafting? Well, thank you, Sir Astinian, for that question. It is very important. So manipulation basically restores five points of durability after each step for the next eight steps. <laughs> that gives you uh, 40 points of durability for a CP cost of 96 um, but it's over time so it, I usually say it's like oh it makes hasty touch cost 5 instead of 10 um, <laughs> so uh, it's one of those things that you unlock at level 65 and I promise it's worthwhile it's the one thing that is worthwhile in life it's manipulation which sounds incredibly like weird and toxic of a name but it's totally yeah um does it restore durability when i use things like uh yeah it does um observe and uh, innovation yes it does restore durability when you use those skills so yeah um and yeah you do promise to do all your quests you better <laughs> How am I so good looking? Well, you see, I'm Emmett Selch. That's how I'm so good I'm looking. Um, I'm so handsome. I am uh, the uh, sorcerer of eld, and I, I have aged well like fine wine. That's why. Would you say it's more efficient to get materials from leveling gatherers or just buying them off the market board? I personally, if you're leveling your gatherers, you might as well do it anyways. Um, might as well get the items anyways uh since you're doing it so closely like if you do it at the same time as your crafters you're gonna get items that you need for crafters around that same level so that's it just makes sense especially since when you're like say you need like uh 99 spruce lumber um it's just a lot cheaper to go and use maybe like 10 minutes of your time to go get it instead of um, buying it off the market board for like 100k. Uh, it's, it, it sounds weird to say like it costs money or it, it to make money you have to spend money but at the same time spend it wisely. Don't spend it so like nimbly bimbly. <laughs> Just, uh, which one has the most interesting storyline? Um, I feel like people are gonna hate me that, for this but I'm one of those cutscene skippers. Um, especially since I've, since I've done them so many times, um, as for, like, the best storyline that I, like, can dine from, like, the few times I've actually paid attention to, like, crafter storylines, um, the Weaver ones are usually pretty cute, especially the Weaver one in Stormblood, um, I think that one's cute. You make, like, 
cute little items for pretty girls. Um, but yeah. Uh, what's the best way to gain materia for your end game craft gear? That's a really good question. So, um, uh, if you haven't, go unlock materia extraction. Um, material extraction, uh, basically, you just have um, a status on your gear uh, that's like soul binding, I think it's called. And when you get it to 100%, use a materia extraction and it will give you um, free materia. Usually around that level, so you can get 10s or 9s when you have level 90 gear. Um, so that's free materia right there. And all you have to do is sit there and either auto make lumber for a bit. Um, there are some items that will boost the rate of uh, spirit bond or soul bonding binding. Um, like I think it's King's Cake and there's an alchemy item um, which makes it like a lot quicker. For a while there I was like taking mats and making them just so I would get free materia because materia at the beginning of an X pack is stupid expensive. Um, another good way of doing it is uh, um, scripts. Scripts will definitely give you materia. Um, usually, I think level 10s and 9s might be purple script. I could be wrong. Um, it might be the other way around, where 9 is white script and 10 is purple scripts. And you'll be going through more 9s than 10s if you're pentamelding. Um, also, a, a thing about materia is also be smart about it, too. Um, since you have a limit of what stat you can have on an item when you go to melt, um, don't use like a level nine when you only need like two CP. You could use like a level two or a uh, materia two. Um, that will get you that CP you need. Spirit Bond Potion. Yeah, that's the name of it. Um, do you think I should finish MSQ before trying to level up my crafters? I'm starting to over level my gatherers and can't do the next class quest until I get to Stormblood. Um, I mean, you don't have to. That's the nice thing that they did unlock, I think, with, um, I think it was with Shadowbringers. They unlocked it where you can get uh, your crafters and gatherers higher than your main class. So you still could do Ishgard Restoration at while you're not even in Stormblood yet. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's still worthwhile. If you like it, just keep doing it. I know people who just fish in this game. Like, <laughs> there are people who are like, I love fishing. I want to go fishing. Let's go fishing. And will spend their time fishing for hours on end in, in Final Fantasy XIV because it's fun. So, I mean, if you find it fun, do it. Um, but yeah, um, as someone who hasn't done crafting at all, is it late, uh, for me to start doing craft? It is never too late. Um, Zayon's right there. Um, always, it's, it's never too late. Uh, I do it on alts just for fun, because <laughs> I'm a monster. Um, I think it's, it's never too late, especially since, uh, you can, uh, repair your own gear when you hit 90. Or 80. I think it's 80. You can repair your own gear. Um, that'll save you a bunch of money. Uh, you make your own stuff. It's fantastic. Even if you're not going to like be a crafter on the market board 24-7, you can still level your crafters to level 90 and they'll still be useful to you. That's the thing about crafting. Same thing with gathering. I mean, there's, it's not as good, but um, it still has its bonuses. Um, what's a good way to use my white script so they don't cap? Materia. 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 Uh, buy level nines. Um, stash them away. Sp I, I would spend it on control, uh, personally. That's usually where I go. Um, is the, the control with my weeklies since I don't really need anything from the script lady anymore. I just grab materia. Um, yeah. Um, is Ishgard Restoration a viable way to level crafting if you're not leveling gathering in the diadem? It is. You just have to buy stuff off the market board, which might not be worthwhile uh, price-wise now. Especially since I know some mats uh, will only drop from monsters there when you're like level 60 gathering. Um, or else you have to like specifically like ask for them or specifically mine for them. And so those are like the expensive time, like 
items. Um, you can still do it. Uh, it might just be a lot harder nowadays with prices. I definitely would encourage server hopping to do price checks. Um, let me check Twitch real quick. Uh, if anyone has any questions on Twitch, I'm more than happy to answer. Yeah, ocean fishing was super fun. I definitely have spent way too much time ocean fishing. <laughs> First ninety was fish here. Uh, we have a we have a samurai in my static who um who didn't level his crafters at all, and uh, he couldn't repair his own gear. Um, but he did get fisher to ninety pretty easily with ocean fishing. So I mean. How bad could it be? Uh, what material will we likely need the most for the remaining pentamounds and endwalker? Craftsmanship X's or control nines? I would say control nines or tens um, are usually uh, the um, good thing to grab. I don't really want to say craftsmanship, especially with how easy some of these things are. So here I'm pentamelted. Let me look at how much craftsmanship I have. I have 3,657. If I go to most recent stuff, let's see what it says. I need 3,180. So I'm a little, a little uh, overpowered there. I don't exactly need that much. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to be in the next couple of weeks uh, when we finally get that patch with the new crap. Uh, well, we're going to get new crafter right hand side and new raid gear. Um, I But I assume it's not going to be an 800 jump. Like, I don't think it's super important. Uh, my biggest, biggest accomplishment as a crafter is the title I'm wearing right now. Um, I did uh, expert crafts for like a month straight. I had someone in my static help me. Uh, with getting food and tinctures for crafting them um, for my KSC weapons, which are technically, technically, quote, quote, best in slot for uh, um, Shadowbringer. But, um, <laughs> but it's not that important now because it was like the last like two or three months of Shadowbringers. Uh, so like no one was buying stuff. Um, but I like them. They're they're goofy looking. Uh, yeah. Um, poor crafters are level thirty. Well, if they're level thirty, you can unlock um go unlock decent thing. Decent thing is wonderful. Um, and you don't even need to be like higher level now to decent items that are super high level. So like. If you get items from like level 90 um, stuff, you can totally nix, uh, you can co totally desynth that level 90 stuff even if your crafters are level 30. They have to be level 30 at least. Um, uh, yeah, that's why I usually say get to level 30 first and then worry, uh, and then, you know, gather, or not gather, uh, get your um, gear and stuff then for level 30 and then higher. I am new to crafting gathering in 14. What gear and tools do you recommend for leveling? Plus, what is the fastest way to level? Um, fastest way to level... <laughs> the fastest way to level is uh, at that at the beginning is going to be your quest and your crafting log. Like I said, crafting log is going to give you uh, extra experience for each time you craft an item for the first time. Um, and then quests give you an outrageous amount of XP. Um, you can get to level 30 real easy. So, uh, and I think that's the, 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 the point where you need to get to for at least all your crafters before you get anywhere else. Um, how good, bad, or easy, easy slash hard is Carpenter, wait, uh, for making money? It's, oh, with Carpenter, uh, definitely make, um, housing items. Housing items there will sell super well, um, especially if you're on an RP server. Or if um, they just dropped, you know, the Ishgard uh, housing stuff. Like, just hit the market at, like, smart points. So, um, 
how do you handle my retainer management being a crafter main? Um, so I have a, those five retainers. Um, they are all full. They are all at 175. Uh, what I do is I literally just pop open my, um, when I get new items or when I'm desynthing new items and they give me new stuff, um, I literally just go through my inventory and try to, <laughs> sounds so nerdy. I'm sorry. Um, it, and try to, uh, store them and if they can't store then I don't already have that item available um, so yeah that's how I do it otherwise um, as you can see my my inventory is still full I have like all my the stuff I need to pay attention to um, like materia and all that stuff wise in my saddlebag and then um, inventory is usually current cr stuff I'm crafting um, which um, if I told you I'd have to murder you because uh, it's how I'm making all my money now. <laughs> um, uh, what's the best way to level descent skill? Uh, just descent. Uh, um, you just keep using descent. Uh, uh, here, let me show the inventory. Um, just that uh, alchemist descent. Oh, alchemist descent would be alchemist made items, which honestly aren't that much. Um, which are like scholar books um, and uh, summoner books. It, yeah, it sucks. Um, yeah, they, they, I think that's the hardest one to level decent wise. Um, how important are food buffs for crafters? They're only really important when you need the extra stats. Um, I, I probably have. I only have, I think, last x packs on me, which is a bunch of chili crab that I got from uh, my friend Ayame, and um, that's enough for me to get by. I usually go with the ones that give you more CP and more control. I don't really need to worry about crafting shit, so. What made you want to start crafting and then do it again? Uh -huh, money. <laughs> you get a lot of gil. A lot. A um, making, like... Just random stuff. You'd be surprised. Like, when you go to do your, like, craft requests, just make double of what you need and then put it on the market board. Because, um, I mean, you're probably either gathering or buying the items and making it. Just make double what you need. Throw it on the market board. Um, people are usually too lazy to do uh, that crafting themselves. Um, and that's easy money for you. Um... How many times are you asked to make the best item to make gill? Uh, if I told you that, I'd have to kill you. Um, so unfortunately, I will not reveal uh, how I make all my gill. Uh, but um, I will hint that it's uh, I, it's something I did mention uh, during this talk. <laughs> You're still eating vintage <laughs> chili crab. Um, all right, so we have three minutes left. Um, <laughs> so... If there's any other um, important questions you want to hit me up with, I do have um, my Twitter, which is at Elysium Tan. Um, let me scroll all the way back. Um, I had it on here. No, I don't. I'm a liar. Uh, <laughs> it's a... Uh, um, here, I'm going to type it in chat. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, there's nothing slotted afterwards. Yeah, so if people have more questions, I'm more than happy to continue. Um, but yeah, my, uh, Twitter is at Elysium, E-L-Y-S-I-U-M, Tan, T-A-N, um, no space between it. Um, I will, I'm happy to take any questions there, or you can hit me up on Discord. Um, I am in the LunarCon Discord right now. Um, you'll find me under Emmett, uh, Mattias. Um, but yeah, uh, I got the a note that I could extend if you guys have more questions. When during the expansion cycle is it best to tackle the Sky Ward challenge? Do you mean um, getting your pterodactyl? Or um, uh, okay, your pterodactyl. Um, oh man, I'm still working on mine. <laughs> I feel like an absolute um, uh, fraud for not having a pterodactyl yet. Uh, I'm very close. I need to do gathering stuff. Mostly, 
it's it's a super rough one. I, I whenever I see someone have it, I'm like they are a no lifer. I thought I was a, a poop sucker on Fall Fantasy 14. They are the true poop sucker. Um, but yeah, spread it out. Uh, it's it's hard. Um, it's hard to say, especially now. It's kind of weird because gathers I feel is easier now because you get more items instead of high quality items, which you never got high quality items in Diadem anyways. So it's slightly easier um, now that you have higher stats too. Um, yeah. <laughs> How are you tackling that? Do you have a good method for getting points? Um, so what I did was I'm obsessive about titles. So I went back through and made a hundred, um, uh, I think it's a hundred, yeah, hundred items for each step of the, um, the expert crafting stuff. Sorry, my mind blank. So I got all the um, the titles there, and then you need to do five hundred thousand for each crafter, and that itself is just grinding. Um, and yeah, it's that's it's a good method for getting points. There's no really good method. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I think with uh, gatherers, especially Fisher, it's more important to be more reliant on the weather because they have the etheric whatever bursts there um, weather wise and that's how you get like really high expensive fish that's also another reason to have decent leveled um, decent thing fish from diadem will give you diadem materials for crafting it's very nice um, one last question are the augmented ironworks crafting and gathering sets worth making uh, for glam um, I ha I used to make them to sell because that was like a good like stop in regards to like I think it's like level 60 right um, and you can get all the items fairly easily from like GC seals and maybe some scripts um, and they're okay glam they're really goofy looking <laughs> they have, you get like the tightest shorts um, I think they're worth it but only if you really want the glam or um, if you're going to make high quality to try to sling on the market board. So, um, yeah. But yeah, there is a pterodactyl mount and it's very hard to get. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry if I missed any questions. Uh, I'm trying to look back through. Um, otherwise... Uh, my dog is freaking out over my neighbor. I'm sorry. The fishing community is super welcoming. Yeah, uh, fishing is super fun. Um, I will admit that I could do ocean fishing forever. I wish it didn't have the time um, like requirement. Like you have to wait like every two hours to do it. That's the only thing I don't like. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully that's it. Uh, <laughs> I am going to go get some boba. I'm happy that you all came and listened to me ran ramble about something I love doing. Um, I'm more than happy to take more questions, uh, either in Discord or, um, on Twitter. Uh, but yeah, thank you for coming and I hope you guys have a great rest of, of LunarCon. Bye!